So welcome to the FMC Dell campus. Uh, we're here with Justin Seeley. He's going to be retouching photos in Photoshop, and we're live streaming. So uh, we want to welcome everybody to the Dell FMC campus. Uh, we've got a lot of awesome stations around the perimeter there, some amazing monitors, uh, and all the Dell team here to uh, talk all about them. And we want to thank uh, Dell for having us here as a partner, and we want to share our uh, experts and our pros here uh, to show you how to do stuff, cool stuff. Ready? Let's rock it. Justin. All right. Thank you, Paul. Uh, as he said, my name is Justin Seeley, and uh, welcome everybody to the Dell campus. And uh, today we're going to be talking about retouching in Photoshop, several different techniques, and uh, not just like removing blemishes and stuff like that, but actually doing some pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off just by retouching this face. And there's several things you can do to retouch a face. A lot of people just use a healing brush and stuff like that, and that's okay. But you throw some extra layers on top of that, you can really get some good results that look almost like you know you see in magazines and stuff like that. So let's start off first. I like to create a duplicate of the background layer just because of the fact that I don't like to be destructive. And um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the spot healing brush and increase the size of my brush by using the bracket key. And what I'm looking to do here is get a brush that's roughly just a little bit bigger than the spot that I'm trying to heal. And so what I'm going to do is just click to start removing some of these areas here. And I don't have to be just crazy about this. I can just remove a few to show you an example. So we're going to clean up the nose a little bit. And all I'm doing is clicking one time with the mouse. I'm not doing anything special to make this happen. And you see up here, we've still got some texture to the forehead. And so what I want to do is just kind of take that out, right? Because we don't, we don't need that in a, in a magazine shoot or anything like that. So I'm going to create two layers out of this layer. One is going to be called uh, smoothing, and one is going to be called structure. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to blur the image first. And you're going to look at it and go, oh, that's awful. And then we're going to add structure to it by running a sharpening technique. And we're going to overlay that over the blurred image so that it actually looks like it's tack sharp again. So I'll create the two duplicates, and then we'll just start renaming. So the first one, like I said, we'll call that smoothing. And then the second one, call that structure. And so I'll turn off the structure layer for a minute, go back to the smoothing layer first. And I'm going to go to the filter menu, blur, and I'm going to choose surface blur, which is something not a lot of people use, I don't think. And the surface blur, generally what I use for the radius is I use anywhere between 5 and 10 pixels. What you're going to have to do is judge for yourself exactly how far you want this to be pushed. The further the radius is pushed up, the blurrier it's going to get. And so if I do this, watch what happens. Like if I put that all the way up and then start to increase the threshold too, you're going to really see like the preview here. See how blurry that gets if I do before and after? That's, that's not what I want. So I'm going to back this down, reset it. And then I'll increase this to like 10. And then hit OK. And that's just going to give it a slight blur right there in the middle. Now, you're also noticing that some of that texture is still there. So what we're going to do is switch temporarily to the lasso tool, increase the feathering quite a bit, because this is a fairly large, high resolution image. And so anywhere between 25, 30 pixels should be fine. Make a selection of the problematic area right around in there. It's automatically going to be feathered. And then I'm going to go to the Edit menu. And I'm going to choose Fill. And I'll use Content-Aware Fill. And that's going to really smooth that out. Now, if you have little areas like this where it's too dark or it creates kind of a spot, you can just go in and override that. Let's do Edit. Fill again. And Content-Aware. And there it goes. OK. Then the last one that we're going to do is right here the structure layer. We're going to turn this on. You're going to see it comes back fully as the image we just got done retouching. So you might look at that and go, ah, that's, why did you do that? Because I'm just going to go to the filter menu, go down to other, and choose high pass. And this is basically going to get rid of all that stuff. And all I'm looking to do here is create some definition. I don't want to bring it back as far as it's going right now, because you can see the eyes and everything are really coming back full force. And if I use this, it's going to be way too much. So I'm going to back that down to something like four pixels and hit OK. Once I do that, go to the normal blend mode and change that to overlay. And so now, on top of that smooth layer, I've actually got a tack sharp layer. So look at this. If I zoom in, especially on the eyes, this is where you really start to see this. So here's before, real blurry, 
and here's after where it's sharp again, which is kind of neat. And then if you find that the blur is too much, which in some case it might be, you can just take that smoothing layer and you can start reducing the opacity on that. And that's going to bring back some of those more natural textures. So in general, we don't want to just blur this thing out where she looks like she's made out of porcelain necessarily. Now, some of those fashion magazines might disagree with me, but I prefer a more natural look. And so you bring back some of that texture, but you don't have it as harsh as it was before. And so that's a basic retouching workflow that I use all the time. I don't necessarily um, use the same techniques every time because every image is different. But you can see here's before when we first started. And here's where we got after. Just three basic steps all the way to there. And you can actually even add a little bit more pop to this by changing the blend mode of the smoothing layer to something like overlay. And that'll give it almost like a digital makeup like effect with some extra contrast. So play around with blend modes and play around with all the different settings. It's going to be different for every image, different for every resolution. And just see what you can come up with. Now, we're going to have a little fun with this one because in Photoshop they introduced a really interesting feature. I believe it was last year where they added in the Face Aware Liquify. And so Face Aware Liquify is basically where Photoshop recognizes that it's working on a face. And when it's working on a face, it will read things like eyes, chin, nose, that kind of stuff. And so you can also do this non-destructively by doing a smart object. So we'll right click that layer, convert it to a smart object. And then we'll go up here to the filter menu and go down to liquify. Once I'm inside the liquify dialog box, need me to pause? OK. So face aware liquify, you see these little things around the outside here? These little things around the outside indicate that Photoshop has recognized the face. And you can also see right here in the panels over on the right hand side, you got face aware liquify as well. And so you can open this up, and you've got control over the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the face shape. And so here, I'm just going to make this kind of a caricature as a proof of concept on how this works. So we're not actually going to retouch this like we would really want to. But So I'm going to increase the size of his eye on the left side, <laughs> increase the eye on the right side. Let's see. There we go. And then we're going to change the eye height on both of those. So we're just going to make these really big. Same way with the width, just cranking these up. And then we're going to tilt the eyes down. See how I'm able to move that in and out? And I can zoom in to show you how this is all working. And then the nose, open this up. And we can elongate the nose, or we can shrink it up. And then we can also change the width, so we can really narrow it down, or we can blow it up. So I'll narrow it down. And then notice as I move through here, it's able to target just these specific areas. And I'm moving the upper lip, and no nothing around it is moving at all. So in this case, I'm going to decrease the size of the upper lip, increase the size of the lower lip. Whoops, let's do that again. There we go. And then the mouth width, I'm going to shrink. And the height, I'm going to increase. So you see, it's, it's kind of funny, but you get the idea. And then let's zoom out so I can see the whole face. And we will increase the size of his forehead, give him kind of a surprised look. And then this is really cool because you can change the entire shape of a face. So you can take his chin away <laughs> or you can add it back to be longer. You can change the jawline in or out. And then the last one is, of course, face width. So you can really widen him out or shrink him up. And once you're done with this, you hit OK. It applies that edit to it. And then it's a smart object. So you can turn that on and off anytime you want to see before and after, which is kind of neat. You can also go back in there by double clicking where it says Smart Filter, or excuse me, double clicking where it says Liquify, and it'll launch the Liquify dialog box again. And then you can reset it just by clicking the reset button. And then you can go in here and make some actual adjustments if you wanted to. So maybe we want to shrink the eyes just a little bit, increase the height change the width just a little. And th these little adjustments go a long way. You don't have to make really exaggerated adjustments like I was doing before. And this will really start to change the way your photos look. 
So I'm not going to change anything else other than the forehead. Just to raise his eyebrows a little bit. And then we'll hit OK. And so here is before and after. Just a slight change. Just a very slight change. But gives him more of a surprised look. The eyes are a little different. Nothing else changes. Just the top of the head. Very simple. Very basic. And so that's Face Award Liquify. It's pretty simple, but also very fun. All right. Now we're going to move on to color correcting a photo because this is something I think a lot of people want to know how to do. They take a photo at sunset or early in the morning. It's too warm. It's too cool. Or it's got a green color cast or purple color cast. And they don't really know how to retouch it to make it look more natural. And so in order to do that, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. And a lot of people are afraid of curves because it is rather involved, right? It's got this, in the properties panel, you've got this big curve. People start coming in here and they start you know, playing around and it looks weird and they don't really understand it. Well, curves is really great at helping you determine where your black point and your white point are in your image. So for instance, if I come over here to these eyedroppers, you've got your black point, your neutral gray point, and your white point right here. So if I want to see the darkest parts of my image, I can select that black eyedropper tool. And then I can come down here and I can hold down the Alt key, and I can start to drag this. As I drag it, you're going to notice that some information comes back into the photo. Where you start to see black, that's the darkest part of your image. And so I can see where that black is right there. I can bring that back, and then right here, use that black eyedropper to click right there, and that sets my black point. I can do the same thing for the white point. Hold down Alt. Oops. Go back that way. Come on. There we go. So you drag the white point now in like this. And wherever you see white initially, that's the lightest part of your image. So right there on the shorts. So we're just going to release that. And then click. And that should neutralize that a little bit and brighten it up. There we go. Slight change. And then the last thing you're going to do is pick the neutral gray. So the neutral gray is probably right here in his shirt. And when I do that, it really neutralizes the photo completely. Now, it might be a little too cool. If that's the case, you can add some warming to it later. Now, of course, this is all pretty involved. And a lot of people look at that and they're like, hey, man, that's a lot of work. Is there an easier way to do that? And as a matter of fact, there is. <laughs> uh, so I show you the hard way first because the hard way, it kind of teaches you what this thing is doing. But the easy way is right here. So in these little menus, and if you never use these menus, by the way, you should really check them out because the little flyout menus have a lot of information in there. So when you click on this, there is an auto options menu. And when you do that, it opens up the auto color correction options. And wh what we did before is we found the light point and we found the dark point. So you can actually tell curves, find those on my own or on your own. And they do that automatically. You don't have to do any of those tricks and then hit OK. And then all you have to do is set the gray point. So this should be neutral right here. Whoops, maybe not. There we go. Kind of tone that back. Come on. It's blowing out my highlights. Oh, it's because I'm doing the highlights. <laughs> Let's do that again. So auto options, find dark and light colors, switch to the gray, and then neutralize it like that. So there. Very quick, very easy color correction without having to do any of that crazy work that I was doing before. Then, once you do that, like I said, it could be a little too cool, like a little too blue. And if that's the case, you can warm that back up. The easy way to do that in curves is to target the channel where the warm colors are. And in most photos, that's going to be the reds. So we can target the red channel and then see how that is pushed way down. I can just take this and start bringing it back up to introduce some more warm tones into the image just to warm it up just a little bit because we neutralize it a little too much. And so and then I'll close the properties panel, put that back over there and let's open the layers panel up and check this out. Here's before when it had the really yellow orange color cast and then there's after, after we removed it completely using curves, which was pretty simple. All right, next exercise. Sometimes you shoot a photo and you get a really good composition, but the weather or the atmosphere doesn't always cooperate. So you might have this really great photo of this valley with the mountains in the background, but the mountains are kind of hazed out 
right? You can't really see them all that well. Well, Photoshop actually has a built-in feature that will allow you to remove haze from an image, and you use Camera Raw to do that. So I'm going to right-click on this, convert it to a smart object, go up to the Filter menu, and choose Camera Raw. And once Camera Raw launches, you're going to go over to the FX tab, FX. And right at the top, there is a dehaze. Now, if you push this to the left, it's going to get more hazy. So if you want to introduce haze into your composition, you can do that. So you can make it look like it was even more foggy than it was that day. But if you want to remove it, you start pushing that to the right. And look how quickly you can bring back those mountains in the background just by cranking that up. Now, you're also going to get a little bit of oversaturation and contrast down here. And so that's why I do this as a smart object, because what I can do after I bring that back is hit OK. And then once that applies, I've got a smart filter mask. And that smart filter mask, I can use the brush tool, increase the size of my brush, make sure that on the layer mask you're planning, uh, excuse me, painting with black. Because when you're dealing with layer mask, black conceals, white reveals. Always remember that. So now I'm painting with black. And I'm just going to paint across the front of the image. And I can remove some of that extra contrast, especially right here in the trees and this baseline of the mountain. And I'm not being real technical right now, not real accurate. And I can kind of see here in the layer mask what it's doing. Turn it on and off to see the difference. I can hold down the Option key, or excuse me, the Alt key, and click. And that's going to show me the full thing. So I can actually come in here and paint out most of this. And then hold down Alt and click it again to bring it back. Now, any of these areas that I don't like that have been lightened up too much, just hit the letter X on the keyboard. And that's going to allow me to brush that back in in some of these areas to kind of make it slowly transition. You could also use a gradient on that as well. So if I were to take this and fill it with white again so that it's completely filled, I can grab the gradient tool, make sure that it's a black to white gradient. And with the black to white gradient selected, I just make sure the white part is up towards the top and the black, ports towards the, or black part is towards the bottom. Hold down the shift key, click and drag a straight line. What I want is I want this to start wherever I want the effect to be fully in view. And then I want it to stop wherever I want the rest of it to go away. So I'll release it right here at the tree line. And there we go. So I've lightened up a little bit of those areas down towards the bottom. And then I've brought it back completely there at the top. And then I can even adjust the camera raw By double clicking on it, that'll launch the camera raw dialog box again. And then I can go back here and I can dial this back in to be even more visible. Hit OK. And so only the mountains change. Nothing in the foreground changes because I've got that gradient applied right there. And then I can turn that off and on anytime I want, which is kind of cool. All right. Another common thing that people ask me how to do in Photoshop is how do I create a color change in Photoshop? So how do I change the color of something like this yellow dress? It's actually pretty easy. There are a lot of different techniques, and I'm going to show you a couple of them here. So the first one would be to simply target the channel of the color that you're wanting to change. And you can do that very easily with an adjustment layer. So adjustment layer, hue saturation. and in some cases, this works. Some cases, it doesn't. In this one, it's going to work very well because we have a very stark contrast between foreground and background. And obviously, the model is not yellow like the dress. And so we can easily adjust those yellow tones by targeting the yellow channel. And then we can just change the hue of that yellow. So we can push this a little bit more, make it pink, increase the saturation a bit, maybe decrease the luminance value to make it look a little bit more natural. And it even changes the small part of her bow in her hair right here, which is neat. And then once I'm done with that, I can turn it on and off to show you there's before and after. So that's pretty easy to color change that. But what if we didn't have the luxury of that being just a single color that we could target? We can do it another way. We can make a selection of this. And the best way to make a selection in Photoshop is using the Quick Selection tool and then Refine Edge or Select and Mask. So I'll make just a rough selection of the dress. And you just paint across it. 
Now, if you get her arm in there, just remove it by holding down the Alt key. There we go. And then we'll get the rest of the dress. Something kind of like that. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to make it a real accurate selection. That's the beauty part of uh, the quick selection tool. You don't have to be accurate at all. So once I do that, I'm going to go up to the Select menu. Hold down the Shift key and choose Select and Mask. Now, why am I holding down the Shift key? I'm doing that because Adobe introduced something called Select and Mask. I'm a huge fan of something called Refine Edge, which is what they had in there beforehand, and they should have left in there. Um, <laughs> but um, when I choose Select and Mask, it gives me Refine Edge, which is what I want. And so I'm now going to change the view to something like on black. That way I can just see what I'm working on. And I've automatically got something right here called the Refine Edge Brush. And I'll use this just to paint around the outside. And as I'm painting around the outside, you'll see different parts of it come back in a little bit. And once I get all the way around it and release my mouse, you will see that it even gets this slight transparency right there on the edge of the dress, which is super awesome. And it gets rid of a lot of the skin tones completely, which is exactly what I want. Now, if I don't want the hair to be selected, I can come in here and try to brush that away, but you'll see that it gets a little bit of it, but not all of it. But it's still better than nothing. And so once I'm finished with that, I choose the output method. So in this case, it's a selection, a layer mask, or a new layer. So what I'm going to do is choose new layer with layer mask. That's going to put the dress essentially on its own layer by itself. Hit OK. And there we go. So we've got the layer by itself. And now I just target that layer by itself. So I can do Control U on the keyboard. That brings up hue and saturation. All I do here is change the color. And notice that only the dress is changing color, not anything else. And so dial it in however we want, hit OK, and there we go. So this works the same for dresses, cars, buildings, whatever you want to use it for. It's all really easy to do. So let's go ahead and close that up. Or no, we don't have to do that. We'll just switch to the last one. OK. Last one that we have here is an old photo. And this is something that um, my grandparents used to ask me to do all the time. They would bring me old photographs, and this is, you know, they would, they would be highly degraded, crooked, torn, ripped, whatever. And they would say, can you turn this into a usable photo? <laughs> and I would say, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, and I learned how to do a lot of this stuff just by playing around. First thing that I always do is I create a duplicate because I don't want to mess up the original. And then for this one, I'm going to create a selection down here at the bottom of that 1939. And once I have the selection done, I'll come over here and I'm just going to grab the patch tool and I'm going to make sure that I have content aware selected right there. So content aware selected and then I'll just kind of move this over and it'll patch that right out. Command or control D to deselect. And once I do that, now I'm ready to start making some more edits. So I'm going to bring back a tool that they took out of the toolbar. And it should be down here towards the bottom. Maybe not. There it is, the ruler tool. So we're just going to drag that over, drop it in, hit done, and switch over to the ruler tool. And what I want to do is straighten this up. So I'm just going to drag along the horizon line down here at the bottom and then click Straighten Layer. That's going to straighten it up, which is cool. But if I turn off the background layer, you can see there are some gaps. And the easiest way to fix the gaps is to hold down the Control key, click the layer that you're working on. That's going to make a selection around the pixel areas. And then I'm going to use Shift, Control, and the letter I to invert the selection. So now I'm only selecting the empty spaces. And then we'll go to Edit, and we'll choose Fill. And we're going to switch this to Content Aware and hit OK. 
and that's going to fill in those gaps with content aware fill. Now there's some areas up here at the top I might have to retouch later, but in general it looks okay. The only thing I might fix is over here on the side, so let's go ahead and fix this. Edit, fill, content aware. There we go, a little bit better. I'd have to work on that fence a little bit, but otherwise pretty good. And so once I have that done and we straighten it up, we've removed the debris from the image. And so now I'm gonna convert that to black and white, clean it up even more. And then I'll use this guy right here. And I can click and drag across this to darken areas and brighten areas to create exactly the look and feel that I want. Now, a lot of people recolor old photographs. I'm not a big fan of that. I like to keep everything as it was. But in this case, the photograph was black and white when they took it. It was not old and yellow. So we've essentially gotten rid of the problems. We've patched certain areas. We've also content aware filled areas. We would need to go back and retouch some of that. But for the most part, in just a few easy steps, we've gone from that to that, which is super cool. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for my Photoshop retouching tips. I want to thank everybody for joining me here. Again, this is live from the Dell campus at, uh, in partnership with FMC here at Adobe Max 2017, live from Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us.